What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Denied Show. Appreciate you for being here. I hope your day was well. My day was awesome. I had to run some errands. And I have to bring you guys this exclusive content. <laughs> Shout out to everybody being here. Please do me a favor and put some stars in the chat if you are excited about this show. Now, we're going to be compartmentalizing. First thing I'm going to talk about is... I'm going to give a recap of the Mahogany Jackson story. Everything that led up into her untimely passing, who's responsible, what happened on social media. And then we're going to segue into the court documents. Yes, I have the actual affidavit warrants signed, filed with the court. And by the way, shout, I, I, I got the best, I got the best uh, supporters on YouTube, hands down. Like, I ask for help and I ask for people to do certain things. You never know who's around you. Found out I have a long-term supporter who's literally right there in Alabama and who did it without even, uh, who went to the court and got me the documents without even thinking. So shout out to you. Hopefully I could go to the court case hearing during the trial and maybe we'll link up for lunch or whatever, but I greatly appreciate you. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> We're going to be going over that, and then we're going to segue into the change.org petition. Also, the phone lines will be open for anybody who wants to talk about the merits and allegations uh, involving Mahogany Jackson's untimely passing, her relationship with her mother, generational curses, and everything that we've been talking about, okay? This is live, okay? If you're on Replay Gang and you're listening, guess what? I'm not live. Don't call me with the... With, with the uh, with, with the TV in the background and I hear what you're saying, <laughs> you're not knowing if it's live or not, okay? Right now, I am live if you are listening. If you are listening, it says I'm live. There's a red circle around my name. I'm live, okay? Just want to put that into perspective. So a lot of people like the conversations we're having over here. And we're going to continue to do something about that. And we're going to continue to entertain. So the hotline is definitely open. The phone number is 747-304-5516. But please let me at least get the affidavits out there in the open and read. You know, the affidavits show a lot of information that I now have um, here on this platform exclusively. Um, you know, when I posted the Mahogany Jackson video to my page, I knew that uh, eventually it would be probably the authority copy because it was removed uh, from Facebook. And also that I had a social responsibility to carry through. I didn't know what it would mean. Honestly, I'm going to be real with you. When I posted it, I was just like, oh, boom, let me post it. And the more I read about it, the more I begin to understand the ins and outs of Mahogany Jackson's case, the more emotional I, I got, the more involved I got and want to advocate for change. So uh, we're going to talk about the change.org petition too. But without further ado, let me see who is in the building before we get into the content. Greatly appreciate you guys for being here. Please make sure you hit the like on your way in. I promise you, you will not regret hitting the like. I just want you to hit the like before you go working out and forget about me, okay? I don't want you to forget about me. Hit the like before you get into it. I promise you this is a great conversation that you will not regret liking. If you're new to the platform, subscribe. Make sure your notification is set for always. That is the bell set for always. So when I do go live, you'll be immediately notified. And you don't have to confuse a replay with me when I'm live, okay? Thank you. If you want to support the channel at any second, uh, you can uh, cash at me, which is the preferred method of donation. Dollar sign to not 007. Cash app, super chat, super sticker, anything that helps this platform is greatly appreciated, okay? Without further ado, let's go ahead and say welcome to everybody. <laughs> I'd be so rude sometimes. I forgot. I forget to say welcome to y'all and I ignore the chat. I don't do that on purpose. I just, when I get into the content, don't rely on me being in the chat. But welcome, Hope. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome, 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 brown queen girl. Thank you so much. Come as you are. Please come just hit the like button while you do this. Like, Yes, 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 yes. Absolutely appreciate you guys. Um, blue life in blue. Good evening tonight, mods and chats. Uh, yes, good evening. Hope everybody had a fantastic day. What's up, Alexis? Glad to see you here popping up. Oh, <clears throat> 
hide this from Rat because he says he got it first and no one else has it. Well, um, I really don't care about that. I'm not really trying to get too far invested in that. Um, you know, I, I begin to understand that, you know what, not, you can't really come from a place of ego covering this because somebody else is like I have great intent with what I'm doing for Mahogany Jackson's and, you know, the entire black community as a whole. And then there's other people that come in and their competition is to get it first or get the click and view or get everybody to send them money to... I really don't have time for that. I really wish that perception would not be attached to me right now. Like I can, I can get wild and have fun and troll roast pack up. I don't feel like doing that every day. You know, I don't feel like doing it every day. I feel like being intellectually correct and politically correct right now. So I don't care about that. I really don't. Please leave me out of that. The the tribalism, the the you need to pick a side. Oh. It's a beeping. Ugh. All right. That was annoying. Yeah, so uh, the tribalism, the anybody that has that type of mentality, those are the people you should stay away from. I don't pay your bill. I don't tell you where you to go. If you like my perception of it, then that's what it is. Somebody else, you know, is going to give you hood. You know, I'm multifaceted. So uh, I don't have any competition. I don't. I'm my own competition and I compete with myself. So please, moving forward, leave me out of that. Like, we've already proven that he's a coward, all of that stuff. And then you bringing that in my chat, give him the right to say, that I'm talking about him when that's not the situation. So moving forward, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to block his name out of my chat. Um, and you're going to get a very nasty message if you ever put that name in my chat again. Because it's not conducive to my material. It's not conducive to my platform. Um, okay? I don't need to do that. I don't need to go in the hood and, and pick. I don't need to do that. Y'all don't know. I'm very intellectual. And when the criminal court case happens, you guys are going to you know, see that. So don't ever say that name in my chat no more. <laughs> okay? So uh yeah, I'm trying to, I'm not trying to get out of my body right now. I'm trying to be intellectually honest because you never know who's watching. Uh I know, but you need your recognition. You're a professional and I love it. Well, everybody here, uh go spam in that chat anytime he says something or any intellectual talking point that y'all know he stole from me, go put my name in the chat. Um, don't, why, why would you worry about, uh, chatting or being in the proximity with somebody that you don't know, somebody that don't know you, that don't know you in a chat. That's weird behavior. So I don't have time for that. If y'all want to do that, y'all literally are a detriment to the community. And unfortunately that's the majority. Y'all play this hide and go seek or this let's go with the popular narrative. I don't have time for that shit. And when I do play it, I promise you I can beat all of y'all at that game. So I don't even know why you try it. But right now is not the time, and I'm definitely, I might respond later at another time, but not right now in this content. Thank you. And you're distracting me, so don't. Um, I missed your live earlier, but still watched it while I was working today. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate you guys for being here, okay? Before I rudely got off the topic. Without further ado, let me see how many likes I got before we get into it. Thank you. And you're just... See how many likes I got before I get into it. Please like the video on your way in. Absolutely. Can I get 100 likes, please? I mean, this is exclusive material or uh, whatnot. So just... <laughs> um, DSGS, I'm going to time you out. Um, because this is my platform and you don't support me, never have, never seen you here and you're telling me what to do. Maybe if you stay out of my content and out of my, matter of fact, I'm blocking you for life. Um, that's how serious I am. Don't matter of fact, you know what? Let me avoid that by going ahead and doing this. I'm just going to put the chat on members only. Members only.
All right, there we have it on members only. Now I can have a peace of mind. Thank you. Go into the Mahogany Jackson Facebook discussion group if you want to get an expedited fact, opinion, immediate answer, or concern, okay? Thank y'all so much for liking. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. All right. So first off, Mahogany Jackson. This whole case around Mahogany Jackson started when her mother uh, had her arrested and she lost her government apartment. She was homeless and she had to go back around Tasia Blue and all of these people that she had absolutely no business hanging around. Um, she advanced and went back in the hood. And that's the situation we're in right now. All of the facts, all of the details and so forth are on my page throughout various videos. Um, that is to other content creators who wants to use this and wants to now like talk about mahogany, okay? So right here is the affidavits, okay? If uh, anybody, anybody could use it. As a matter of fact, I'm going to publish this because I do feel like it should be public record within a matter of 72 hours, so I don't care. But um, this right here is the arrest warrant and affidavit for each and every subject uh, defendant. I mean, and I scrolled ahead because it shows personal private information that I'm not at liberty to disclose on YouTube. But here is the affidavit warrant, the state versus Francis R. Harris. It specifically says personally appearing before the undersigned as magistrate judge of the district court of Jefferson County in and for said County Mark Green, which is the detective that testified about the materials in the video, who being dual uh, sworn says that Francis R. Harris, whose name is otherwise unknown to affidavit in said County did on or about February 24th, 2024, did intentionally cause the death of Mahogany Jaquez Jackson to which shooting Mahogany Jackson with a firearm and Francis R. Harris caused said death during the time that he was engaged in it or attempted to engage in sodomy with Mahogany uh, Jacrese Jackson by forceful composure in violation of section 13A-5-40A3 of the Alabama Criminal Code. Uh, it is signed by the judge, signed, sealed, and delivered. So this is why he's charged with capital murder because of this allegation in the video substantiated. Okay, let me speed ahead. Okay, this one right here is another affidavit. Okay, these people's names and addresses all throughout this paperwork, and I'm not that type of content creator. So this one right here is the State versus Giovanni Renee Clapp, okay? Um, all right. Person appeared before the undersigned as magistrate judge of the District Court of Jefferson County in and for said county, Mark Green, who being duly sworn, says that Giovanni Rene Clapp, whose name is otherwise unknown to affidavit in said county, did or about about February 24th, 2024, did with intent to cause physical injury to another person causing physical injury to Mahogany Jaquiz Jackson by means of the deadly weapon or a dangerous instrument to wit pistol whipping Mahogany Jackson with a firearm in violation of Section 13A621A2 of the Alabama Criminal Code. So this is why the pistol whipping charge stood, but they got um, Harris on camera or uh, statements from the other ones in the pursuit of this investigation saying and alluding that he did it. So Giovanni Clapp is just trying to say that she pistol whipped her in uh, Mahogany and that she's not a part of any conspira conspiracy to unalive her, which is right now before the grand jury. Here is another affidavit warrant. This is for Jeremiah Lee McDowell. Person appearing before the undersigned as magistrate judge of the District Court of Jefferson County in and for said county, Mark Green, who being uh, duly sworn, says that Jeremiah Lee Medaya, whose name is otherwise unknown to affidavit in said county, did on or about February 24, 2024, did willfully and unknowingly abduct or attempt to abduct Mahogany Jaquez Jackson with the intent to terrorize Mahogany 
Jackson on another personal, excuse me, or another person, and while doing so, intentionally caused the death of Mahogany Jackson, to wit, by shooting Mahogany Jackson in violation of Section 13A, 540A1 of the Alabama Code. So, um, this one, McDowell, they're saying that he shot her. So, I recall on the Facebook group, people are saying how in America is everyone charged with shooting when it only was one bullet and one person shot. And we're going to get to the Alabama uh, criminal code in which they're referencing and see if it says anything about a co-conspiracy aiding and abating. Um, anyways, this affidavit is against Ariana Lachey Robinson. Okay, let me make sure you guys are still with me. Everything is here. All right. Ariana Lachey Robinson. Mark Green swore that Ariana Lachey Robinson, whose name is otherwise unknown to the affidavit in said county, did on or about February 24th, did commit or attempt to commit a felony clearly, clearly dangerous to human life to wit. I'm confused because it's the 24th Saturday or Sunday. I'm confused. Um, I'm so sorry. Give me one second. Let me go to this calendar. And by the way, we're definitely going to get into commentary about this um, afterwards. I just want to get to this. The... Oh, my gosh. This happened on Saturday, not Sunday. This is the 24th. Wow. So on Saturday, which was the day after her mother kept calling her, and Blue said she was kidnapped, and then it happened to her later. So she was kidnapped on Friday when she was calling her mother nonstop. Or I don't understand because they was at the juice lady too. But anyways, we're going to get into all of that. As far as Ariana, whose name is otherwise unknown, February the 24th, which is Saturday, did commit or attempt to commit a felony clearly dangerous to human life, kidnapping in the first degree, and in the course of an infurtherance of said commission or attempted commission of said felony, or an immediate flight there from Ariana Robinson or another participant did cause the death of Mahogany Jackson. Shooting Mahogany Jackson with a firearm in violation of Section 13A62A3 of the Code of Alabama. Wow, that's breaking news. It happened on Saturday, not Sunday. Mm. We got to pull out the receipts. So this is Brandon Pope. Mark Green testified that Brandon Cortez Pope, whose name is otherwise unknown to Affian in said county, did or about February the 24th, Saturday and not Sunday, did willfully and knowingly abduct or attempt to abduct Mahogany Jackson with the intent to terrorize Mahogany Jaquez Jackson or another person. And while doing so, did intentionally cause the death of Mahogany Jaquez Jackson, shooting Mahogany Jaquez Jackson in violation of 13540A1. There must be a conspiracy uh, definition underneath that statute. Has to be. This one right here is uh, Taja Lewis. Mark Green testified that Taja Lewis, whose name is otherwise unknown to Affiant in said county, did or about February the 24th, did commit or attempt to commit a felony clearly dangerous to human life, kidnapping in the first degree and or sodomy in the first degree, and in the course of an infurtherance of said commission or attempted commission of said felony, or an immediate flight therefrom, Taja um, Lewis or another participant did cause the death of Mahogany Jackson, shooting Mahogany Jackson with the firearm in violation of Section 13A5-2A3 of the Alabama Code. That's Tasia. Let's go down. Um, this is another one for Tasia. All right, another one for Tasia, where uh, February 24th, she caused physical harm and injury. This is the one where she pistol whipped it. So Giovanni Clapp and Tasia are the two aggressors that really, you know, cause physical harm with the gun, with the pow pow. But we already seen Ariana 
um, and Shania punched her as well. So they escalated it with the pistol whipping. Um, this one is, let me see who this one is. Francis R. Harris. Francis Harris, whose name is otherwise unknown to Afian, and said County did her about February 24, 2004, did willfully and knowingly abduct or attempt to abduct Mahogany Jackson with the intent to terrorize Mahogany Jackson or another person, and while doing so, did intentionally cause the death of Mahogany Jackson, shooting her. Okay, who is next? Who's next? And this one is another one against Giovanni Clapp. Uh, February 24, 2004, a felony clearly dangerous to human life, kidnapping in the first degree, in the course, um, or immediate flight there after Giovanni Clapp or another participant did cause the death of Mahogany, yada, yada, yada. So they keep bringing up this um, statue. It is 13A-6, let me see, Alabama statue. Make sure you guys hit the like, please hit the like, please hit the like. All right, please hit the like. I, I might actually start pulling up these people's <laughs> places of residence to show you what type of tax bracket that they come from and what they avoid. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure they added up. They they come from the poker beans of Bir Birmingham, and the poker beans of Birmingham they need to be gentrified at this point. Birmingham need to be saw off the map. I continue to say that these crimes are going on and make it so bad. Uh, it's a clear example as to why this whole no snitch code should not be use or uh, substantiated throughout our community anymore 13a-6-13a-6 dash dash i'm gonna get to the chat one second two a three if you find from the evidence that the state proved beyond a reasonable doubt okay so just looking at this sworn affidavit by uh this District Attorney, I think his name is uh, Donald or Daniel Clapp, or not, why did I say Clapp? The light-skinned dude who's the District Attorney over there in Birmingham, Alabama. Um, these allegations are extremely, you know, extremely vague, and this is why uh, some of the charges was dropped. Some of the charges was dropped against Giovanni Clapp because of the information in the videos and opposed to him, like, actually being able to articulate what's going on in the videos to form a statement of conspiracy. He's not stating any any specific law about the crimes. He's just stating the facts at bay as far as the allegations fitting for the crime. But he's not really giving any details, which is why the Detective Green had to come forward um, and testify. So in the state of Alabama... They're sending the case to the grand jury. Mind you, it's not mandatory in the state of Alabama. But when you are the district attorney uh, and you file vague and ambiguous um, uh, affidavits and arrest warrants for people, then the judge doesn't even get to see any probable cause for certain cause, certain causes of actions and counts during a preliminary hearing because the paperwork is just vague. It's not detailed. It's not specific enough. Uh, at all. It's not detailed enough. He didn't describe what he saw in the videos that led to or made the judge believe that there was some type of co-conspiracy. And the officer who's not well versed in law and just as far as the district attorney goes, um, was not able to fully articulate that, hey, these people are in a conspiracy and so forth. So let me look up Alabama fe uh, felony uh, murder, uh, felony murder law, because this is what's going before the grand jury. I hope it's not too much. Oh, it's not too much. And I'm going to be able to tell you right now if the grand jury is going to find them guilty of uh, felony uh, murder based upon what it means as far as the law go, probable cause. Is it clear under the law that these people should be held accountable for felony murder? So uh, in Alabama Criminal Code, uh, Title 13, H Chapter 6, Article 1, dealing with homicide and murder. Uh, which is section 13A6-2. That's what he's referencing. But a person commits the crime of murder or if he or she does any of the following with intent to cause death to another person, he or she caused the death of that person or another person under circumstances manifesting extreme indifference to human life, he or she recklessly engaged in conduct which creates a grave risk of death 
to a person other than himself or herself and thereby causes the death of another person. So pursuant to uh, 13A6-2A2, um, this is where the co-conspiracy come into play. So I don't understand why the judge dropped the charges against Giovanni Clapp. I do know pursuant to this particular section, uh, any reasonable grand jury is actually going to go ahead and indict them for those charges. So rest assured, they're not going to get away with anything. And as a matter of fact, most people look at grand juries as if they just are literally like a rubber stamp. They're literally just like stamping it. It's a rubber stamp. Okay, you want this? Boom, it's stamp. Is everything going, uh, is going to be copacetic, you know? So all of them definitely are going to be indicted for felony murder. So there was a content creator who was talking about bailing Giovanni Clap out to do an interview. Uh, there's a, a, another content creator who let Jessica plea, uh, cop the deuces plated 25, 50, 75 or whatever to lie because we found out that the mother is full of crap too. We also found out that the mother, when she was on CBF, CBF Ministries, uh, when he made her go to the screen and talk and she looked like she didn't want to be there, she specifically said out of her own mouth that her daughter loved her family and that her daughter loved CBF too, as in the ministry. CBF ministry is a conglomerate organization comprised of 18,000 ministries all over, which includes in the United States and other places as well. CBF Ministries, owned by one cook or whatever his name, is a business entity to him. He's it's giving Nature Boy vibes. It's giving he likes to go in and infiltrate families and set them apart based on those who accept his ideology and those who would not. They would like to paint mahogany to be a regular uh, mahogany to be a rebellious child. We all are rebellious, especially against cult, a cult like mentality. So that's why they said mahogany was difficult. That pastor made, uh, you know, uh, mahogany's mother take her car and give it to her auntie and cousin. That pastor um, doctored a receipt saying that it was mahogany typed in all perfect grammar that he wanted to speak at the eulogy and didn't let nobody in the family, nobody in the community speak on behalf of mahogany. It was the weirdest thing I ever seen. And then, you know, after I got my facts and after I started questioning things, I approached the mother and I asked the mother, about her thoughts and her perceptions and about the food stamps. And if she got arrested, she completely denied any of it. So it's giving narcissistic vibes. However, that is not to distract from the facts. The facts are there's eight suspects being held accountable in criminal court. However, that needs to be 10. So according to my change.org petition, um, this is the best way I can articulate that there needs to be at least 10, um, at, at least 10 suspects being held accountable uh let me go ahead and pull it up really quickly okay if you guys look right here there's a change.org petition that i started on behalf of mahogany jackson um every thousand subscribe excuse me every thousand signatures that i get i'm going to be in communication with the appropriate people i know exactly who they are i've already reached out to them already in communication with them about this particular change.org petition which is the Mah mahogany jackson law it is basically to update uh, Senate Bill 143, which all which basically uh, talks about gang banging activities and street activities. The call to action pursuant to Mahogany Jackson law um, is to require law enforcement authorities to treat a group or ongoing associates prior to commencement of a crime of five or more persons connected to a felony crime within the scope of 18 U.S. Section Code Section 521D, rather in person or electronic communication be classified as a gang. So basically, I've all, all I did was repeat the law. The only thing, given that we live in digital a digital era and cell phones and people can talk and you got people like Blue um, know everything and orchestrating and everything and pulling the strings that ultimately led to Mahogany's un unalivement, she feels like she can get away with it because she wasn't there in on the video or in the physical to actually touch her. So basically, this the Mahogany Jackson law will basically update existing law to include the digital era. As in, and this is substantiated because even if I'm talk, just talking about the videos, that's enough substance in itself. But I'm also talking about other co-conspirators who could have played a role. Uh, it ain't nothing for a, a, a phone company, a, a, I mean, a prosecutor or a detective to subpoena 
prosecutors subpoena phone records to get certain phone calls, certain everything from Blue to automatically indicate that she has something to do with this, at least from the looks and likeness of electronic communication. And then the suspects and the other co-conspirators should have a reasonable opportunity to give evidence to confirm or deny if Blue had anything to do with this, as if she was the setup queen. So this right here, the Mahogany Jackson Law, is to fix setup queens that use telephones and orchestrate stuff and work behind the scenes. Now, would they do it? I don't know, because it goes above and beyond just Mahogany Jackson. This means that they would be making a law to get Rich white people who sit in their mansions and never touch drugs, but got the little black guys that live like the rap stars selling drugs for them. It, it, it means that they get to go out the Lucy and Gree edge or, or all of these big, big powerful executives. It's not just out the blue. So it's a big ask. And it's something that we need to do on behalf of Mahogany Jackson and on behalf of humanitarian human uh, nature, period. But anyways. It goes on to say the Mahogany Jackson story and so forth and to reignite the call to action on behalf of Mon Mahogany. Why do I want to blue ever since blue called monogamy, mahogany, monogamy. I've been messing up her name. So please forgive me. Mahogany Jackson. So go ahead and sign the petition It's actually click above and it's pinned above. OK, so I just wanted to have a clear, clean, crisp live screen getting through the facts and circumstances, okay? Let me get to the chat to see what you guys are saying. And uh, let me know because I know the facts of this case like the back of my hand. Other people want to cover it. And, you know, so as long as the facts are out there, then that's what it is. But as far as indoctrinating, excuse me, indicting the entire Birmingham for this, I'm not going to do that. That's very dangerous. Anyways, please hit the like. Please hit the like and let me know your thoughts and opinions. You know what? I'm actually going to be looking up some of these places um to see how these people lived honestly i'm not gonna show y'all but i got the address i'm not gonna show y'all um but i am gonna pull it up 18 i'm gonna show you once i pull it up but not the address because that's against youtube policies and uh people are just waiting for me to slip up but it's not gonna happen 18 um 40 maple uh, Let's see. This right here would be the residence of Francis Harris. Harris Francis. This is the trigger man. Oh my gosh, y'all been calling the phone. I had to disconnect it. My bad. Sorry, I'm going to go ahead and connect the phone back again. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry, let me go ahead and connect the phone. You guys can call in um, if you have any questions or concerns about my previous discussions, any facts in this situation, because I pretty much discussed all of them. Just let me see what you guys are saying. Yes, please hit the like. Please hit the like. I greatly appreciate each and every one of you guys, okay? Please hit the like. So for anybody that want to take the affidavit, sworn things, and cut around it, and doing all of that stuff, yeah, right. Um, so yeah, please hit the like. Let me. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the uh, open up the chat for everybody instead of just my members because I'm pretty sure other people want to say something. I just needed to get to that, and I wanted to. I didn't want to go to cussing and acting all crazy in the beginning of the live stream. <laughs> Because um, that's when they put you in the yellow, and you don't you don't stay in the green, and they they won't you know pay you for your work or anything like that. So that's how I have to make money on YouTube. Okay, so uh, but anyways, I just freed the chat. I freed the chat. Let me know what you guys think. Like this video. Like this video. Subscribe. Subscribe to the channel. Greatly appreciate each and every one of y'all for being here. I do. All right. Um, thank you guys so much for signing the petition and sharing it. Every thousand subscribers, I not subscribers, but every thousand signatures I get, I'm gonna be in touch with the legal authorities and the people that are in charge um and can make a difference based on that petition are actually listed in that petition. So you can look up the names. The mayor of Birmingham, 
the Senate uh, uh, of Birmingham and so forth, they're all there, okay? So let me actually show you the email so you guys know. Because a lot of people be creating change.org petitions just to harass people or they don't even know how to execute um, change.org petitions at all. They don't know how to execute them. But I know how to execute change.org petitions. Get it to the right authorities. Okay. Mm, 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 mm. So let me uh, let me make sure this address is not showing. But this right here is. <laughs> this right here is Francis House. Hello. One second. Let me. Uh, hello. Yeah, let me one second. Let me connect it back to Bluetooth. How you doing today? I'm okay. I'm good. Give me give me one second. Let me let me call you right back. I'm gonna connect it to the Bluetooth. Okay, okay. I don't know why it's it's like this phone is so difficult to use, but it's so it's like I feel um Bluetooth. Bluetooth. Feel crazy because this phone is so like technically disadvantaged. But this right here, right here, what you guys see, you don't see the address. But this is what Francis lived at. You got you got uh, mahogany coming from what appears to be structure household. You know, um, clean taking baths and shit. You know, and this right here is what uh, Francis come from with a dog. Look at the dog. They ain't even feeding the dog. This dog is anorexic. And Francis is actually Vito's stepbrother. So Vito's father or mother decided to lay up with something that came from this. The pit bull is anorexic, y'all. They literally got a lawn mold, mold, everything on the goddamn porch. This is what he came from. The And you know he ain't no man. Francis ain't never been no man. Want me to tell you why? Because if he was anything related to me or grew up like me, he would have to get his motherfucking ass up there and clean them goddamn gutters. Look at the gutters. That house looked like a lemon. Why would Mahogany hang out with somebody that come from something and live like this? Look like, look like the bed bugs. They said the shit, the house too nasty. We'd rather go sleep outside. On the dog. Bitch, that dog ain't ate in a minute. Child, let me turn this phone off and cut it back on. Because it says connecting, but it ain't connecting. It's doing to. Let me make sure it's not connected to my phone. But yeah, look look at where he come from. Dirty ass dude, bro. This made me even mad just by looking at this. Y'all, 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 y'all got good parents and stuff. Y'all got good households. It's, you know, and y'all hanging out with people like this, man. I don't give a damn. Like somebody like this, you gotta be an exceptional Negro where the white folks wanna come and adopt you for for me to even affiliate or socialize with you. The dogs look sick. That dog right there look like Ariana, just brown. That's it. So you got me messed up. If I had kids that hung out with people like this, I'd beat their goddamn eyes out. And I'd tell them I'm being you because that's how they're going to do you. Because you got a fancy lifestyle. They jealous of you. Gosh, can y'all stop taking... This phone been going off the hook. Let me turn it off and back on because it's not connecting. Restarted, but yeah, this is where Francis live at right here, bro. With a mangy dog. Now, just imagine you you working your whole life to make yourself out of the hood, and somebody live like that. That's the Hobbit house and the Lord of the Rings shit. You heard Blue didn't attend what? <laughs> okay, let's look at whose house should we look at next. Um, whose house should we look at next?
Giovanni Clout was homeless. She was homeless, Giovanni Clout. She probably was over there staying with Tasia too because she homeless. That's why we, when we seen Giovanni Clout in the courthouse smiling and laughing, she was happy. She was somewhere where she could take a bath, three square meals. She ain't have shit to live for. She ain't have shit to live for. Her situation, like, you know, mahogany, uh, mahogany, mahogany did not want to listen to her mother and did not want to be a part of that cult, and I don't blame her, but Giovanni Clapp, they didn't want the Clapps in their goddamn house, so they had to kick out. How your last name, Clapp? Your whole family got Clapp, oh. Child. Her last name, Clapps, and she's homeless. I don't know what she did, but one wasn't selling no VV at all. Homeless, scared. Don't Giovanni Clapp look like a bed bug in the face? Her and Miss Netta, them, they look like cockroaches. Them big ass keloid cockroaches that hopped up off of Miss Netta's face. Giovanni Clapp look like that. Can't play too. Oh, Jeremiah McDowell. Okay, I see where he, he got it. At least he got an address. Okay, it ain't an apartment address either. Okay, I got, let's see what it is. I see it. Not him with all them folks. Listen, this boy got so many folds in his uh, uh, address, you would think Jay-Z was involved. Uh, zero. Let's see what he... he and they say this the 18-year-old boy that ain't did nothing. This the 18-year-old boy that they need to free. Y'all remember the girls that got on the video? The video on my page. The girls got on live with Vito saying that the 18-year-old boy ain't did nothing. And, and they peer pressure him to do it. Uh, let me see. Street. <laughs> Three, Three, five, two, zero, six. All right, got it right here. Let's see how he live. Oh, my Lord. My Lord, my Lord. Look how the 18-year-old the boy. Y'all know the 18-year-old boy, right? McDowell, the, the one with the big old frog eyes. This is life. This is his lifestyle, yo. I believe he was scared. I totally believe he was scared. This this is where he lived at. And France is the ringleader. France looked like he sleep on top of some, some motor oil change car. Motherfucking big ass part sitting in the living room. So this right here. <laughs> is Jeremiah's house. He done left this to go to the big house. With a charge harming and unalive and a black woman in a conspiracy to do it. Mm -mm. When the girls first got on live and told me, hey, he ain't do it, they peer pressure me. I was like, okay, let me give him the benefit of the doubt. Psh, ain't no peer pressure law, sir. Not you coming from this. Do you act like you, 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 you reverse Will Smith? How you gonna live in some that look like Bel Air and Beverly Hills in Birmingham? Cause it don't get no better than this in Birmingham. Let's be clear. To go back over there to be with somebody, hanging out with Tasia, so an out of town. The Tasia and got all y'all fucked up. She from out of town. I see why Tasia had all the clout and all of that in in the fucking projects over there, in the poker bean projects in Birmingham. She wasn't there. She wasn't kin to nobody. She spread them legs for everybody. She ain't matter if it was a cousin, a brother, brother, the police. It ain't matter. Tasia was going to spread her legs for everybody. And you find yourself hanging out with somebody that do that. Like you bought that life. Peer pressure is a motherfucker, but guess what? If they ever, if they had something called de death row and eligible for parole, that's what I would, that's what I would uh, go for you. But they don't. I'm sorry. You need to be on death row with the rest of these motherfuckers to learn your lesson. You are you. Thank you, uh, uh, 
McDowell. Thank you, Jeremiah McDowell. You are the sacrificial lamb for all of the black and brown kids whose parents pulled themselves out of the fucking hood and to stand away from Tasia to get a house like this to afford a life for you. But you want to go over there and hang out with your big frog ass ass. Okay, sit down. You need death. I sent this you. We the people going to sent this you to death row with the eligibility of parole after 85 years, bitch. Blue should have kept her mouth shut. Child, please. Child, ain't no peer pressure laws. <laughs> oh, where's she from? Mm, 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 mm. Birmingham, Alabama. Child, please. They need to just cut Birmingham off the map. And them goddamn district attorneys, all of them, Fannie Willis, da David Daniel Carr, not you come with this weak ass affidavit and got these people over here. Well, it's not really weak. It's just very vague. If this is in civil court, Danny Carter, you know this shit will get thrown back in your face. Ooh. So let's see where Ariana lives. Uh-huh. All right, I see that address. Let me make sure it's blocked. Oh, shit. Okay, I'm going to have to blur that out. I'm going to have to blur this out. It's all good. <laughs> all right, let's see where Ariana lives. Let's Google the address. I'm going to blur that out. So, thankfully, YouTube gives you that option. Um, okay, let's see. Oh shit, let me let me hurry up and turn the phone back on before they get mad at me. Okay. Um Bluetooth. Um Hopkins. Yeah, Hopkins Drive. Mm, 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 mm. Boy, I tell you, these kids are something else. Look at Ariana House. You ain't about that life. Sit your little itty bitty chicken little looking ass down. Not you got you got a fucking a uh, picky black a picky brown porch, and that's the life you chose. And that's the life you chose. You got a picky brown porch right there before you. Oh my gosh. I'm trying to connect, y'all. And this is what... Th she had this lifestyle. Look, clean yard, clean house, mold grass. Parents work hard. Your parents work hard as hell. You know what it reminds me of? The the lady that called and said she got a 15-year-old daughter to hang around them scut back scallywags and it. Why would you go from something like this to be in Tay's apartment, child? Boo. I said, we the people send to you. Ariana, because you the one who got it crunk. We the people send you to death without the possibility of parole. And we also need you to write a memorandum of understanding for the little girls that look like you, that, that's looking at you, that remind you of themselves to say, don't go back in the hood. Mm-hmm. Miss Wiley Lynch, that's what we're going to call you. Ariana, how you come from this to be child? You would think you would think that they ate sugar waters and mayonnaise sandwich growing up. Not in no house like this. Or if they did, at least their parents made it out so that they can have a better way. You're supposed to pass on generational wealth. Generational wealth is not just a physical attribute. It's a socialite status. People don't understand Brandon Pope, 
Let's see where Brandon Pope live. I'm pretty sure it's next to the dumpster. So he can masquerade that motherfucking scent. He smell like, say he smell like Big Bedusa. Be sent up there. I don't even know why. Oh, he had no choice. He and they say that uh uh mahogany was at Brandon's house. And I remember seeing some text messages saying that she was at Brandon's house and that he had her in the hood at Taser's house. So let's see if that was true. Because if he live in the hood, it wouldn't make any sense. Child, y'all was getting on my nerve. I'm trying to connect right now. No, why this shit is not connecting? Let me see will it connect with this phone since it's not connecting with this phone. All right, I'm going to turn this down and I call, I'm, I'm going to call you guys back when I feel like it. Uh, or I thought, at least I thought I'd get to this, okay? So let me make sure the screen isn't showing it's not. All right. Brandon, one second. McMillan. Avenue. All right, let's see how he was living. Mm. Oh, why would you go to something like this? So, as I suspected, Brandon, this is where Brandon live at, right? Okay. Something like a back row, you know, dirt row. Projects. The projects. That's the projects. That's the project. Sorry. Not sorry. Look, projects. Projects. I would never hang out with nobody that live in no shit like this. Projects. Hell to the no. Yeah, I mean, fuck though. And look at the dumpsters back here. Projects. Projects, bitch. Project, baby. Look, they even got the little power wheel out there with the little child, please. I would never raise none of my kids in no shit that look like this. Got me all the way fucked up, bitch. Look at this shit. That that right there, look. Don't look like nobody come and get that shit but once a month. And then when they do, they probably get pow, pow. Project baby ass, bitch. Sugar water, mayonnaise, stank eating ass, bitch. Ew, ugh. Bitch, I would never in my life be caught dead in no shit that look like that, hoe. I had to go back home and I and I make sure my I make sure my family if I'm going to some I know my family know exactly where I'm at, bitch. Sharing location. No, bitch, you got me fucked up. Never be fucked up with no niggas that's content with living in some shit like that. I'm sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Um Taja Lewis. Okay. People have pulled that up. Oh, so on this paperwork, Taja Lewis. Oh, I'm starting to see something. So on this, it says unknown address of Tasia Lewis. And we all know that Tasia Lewis live in apartments where that stuff happened. We already seen that, right? But on the papers, it says unknown because she didn't want to claim ownership of her residence, nor did Giovanni Clapp. I believe there's evidence in Tasia's apartment and Giovanni Clapp's residence or something as to why they said that they don't have an address. So Tasia didn't want to claim her address, even though the police that arrested her, they already know where she's from. They don't know where she live. They arrested her in her house. She don't want to claim it because there's so much evidence in there, so much blood. So put an ultraviolet light under that bed. 
So Tasia done lied about her address. She need to be charged with that. She need to be charged. Lied to the police. Mm -hmm. Lied to the police. We already seen Francis Harris. It's another one. Mm, 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 mm. And the other two were forwarded to the grand jury. And we already know. Grand juries are private. Grand The grand jury probably already happened. Honestly. It probably already done freaking happened. So let me call y'all back. Some of y'all. Let's see. Hey, what's up? This is Denot. Welcome to the Denot Show. How are you doing? Oh, good. Finally. Can you hear me okay? <laughs> I can't. Just give me one second. Unable to connect. It's turned on and in range. It is. Ugh. Yeah, I can hear you. Um, Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, what's up? Welcome to the Denot Show. Okay, so, hey. All right, so I just want to say a couple of things, like... First of all, as far as with the police and the investigation, it was already said that these girls were, like, servicing the cops. Well, they don't want but so much to come out. So they're not going to they, investigate but They went to that house. They knew that girl was in there. But um, I want to talk about the generational curses because um, I'm in Jacksonville now. I'm from New York. But one common thread that I see in a lot of families down here, and I'm white, my kids are mixed, I'm not a wigger, I'm just me, uh, my kids are... Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, hold on, because I got to stop the live or else I can't hear you. I'm hearing you. Yeah, yeah, okay. you're, 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 yeah, you got to uh, stop the live on your Okay, hearing. so what happened this evening is with my daughter's family, like... Secrets. Um, it just seems like there's a lot of secrets, a lot of family secrets. And the women, they protect the men at any cost. So whatever went on in that house with mahogany and probably with a lot of them, there's a lot of, uh, you know, SA and um, I don't know if I could say the word, you know, when people. Yeah, yeah, no, SA is, SA is great. SA all is fine. kinds of things like that. And the big thing is you can't tell no matter what. You just got to keep the secret, keep the secret. And the older generation, they just. It seems like to me, and and believe me, I'm, I don't, I just, it's something I've witnessed and lived with for all. My daughter's forty two, and mixed, and my son is thirty six. So I've been around, and believe me, once you have children that are mixed, um, I'm no longer considered white. Believe me, what in certain circles. So um, I've seen a lot of of things that go on, and it's very sad because it seems to be like a lot of these places like Alabama, Jacksonville. It's a landlocked state, meaning the people are never going to leave. People that are born there are probably never going to leave. And they raised the. I would like to know why Mahogany's daughter is already getting a check, um, because that seems to be a big common thing. It's like getting SSI for the children is like a big deal. Like that. That's it. Well, hold on. I, I would like to say that 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 has that is that is an a factual allegation, given the fact that Mahogany's daughter appear to have something is not confirmed. We almost. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not talking about her. I'm talking about generational stuff. I'm not I'm talking about. My yeah, family. but you're talking about getting a check. I just want to put it into perspective that uh, Gail is currently getting a check, uh, money deposited into an account for Mahogany's daughter, but she gave that baby away. She don't even have a baby, and the baby, mm -hmm. I said the baby that Mahogany's mother might sign that baby birth certificate, which is why the child's name is. Um, Maddox instead of Jackson or whoever the Maddox guy is that she was with probably actually be uh, could be the father. I don't know. Okay, I, well let me put it in, in my family. In my family with my daughter's uncles, and this is not everybody. Nobody's everybody because everybody's individuals, and you can't just blanket stereotype people. But I'm just saying more in the south because I've been in both. I'm from New York, but I moved down here, and it just seems that. 
there's just this this it's like a stall on progress and on women and empowering women and they get put in these situations where I've seen mothers that sit there and literally push their daughters up to go get money from people, you know, to get money from men and things like that. <laughs> I've seen like um, all kinds of things that go on in the family and you can't tell it. And I'm talking about secrets that are horrible. But as far as in my family, <laughs> my two uncles, there was nothing wrong with them. But their grandmother came from Alexandria, Louisiana. And in those days, she was 13. They would marry off the girls. They would have a bunch of kids, a lot like the color purple. Mm -hmm. And, you know, unfortunately, they grew up and a lot of them didn't have education. And this is not everybody. But at the end of the day, she would make her kids go to the doctor and tell and act a certain way so that they could, you know, get a check, thereby making the kids think that there was something wrong with them when there wasn't. Yeah. The kids were, they were fine. Um, but in this case... I just think that all these kids, there's something wrong. There's no regard for life anymore. When I was younger, we, you know, we fought. You know, their guns weren't available like this. I mean, it, my nephew was killed 17 years old. They shot him 17 times by his friends who he was going to leave alone. There was a note in his backpack. He was going to leave them alone. He said it two days before and they killed him. And um, Jacksonville is very bad with the same kind of thing that's going on in Alabama. It's not unusual. They exactly. need to lock them up. We we need we need to use this Mahogany Jackson case yes, sir. to to get these people for gang charges. Yeah, because out here it was the cuts, and 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 you know the thing is when he did want to get out, they wouldn't let him, and they they target minors because minors can't get you know supposedly the same amount of time, and they get these minors that are looking for guidance or looking for whatever, and it's not even like the Bloods Crips. It's it's these little homemade things like. This new love, no love, or whatever. Here it's the cuts. And, you know, there's all kids. And there was one year where nobody made it to 18, literally, within within like a year, literally about 20 or 30 17 year olds were killed, like right before they turned 18. It's just, it's, and you get numb. The people are numb to it. I, I couldn't believe it. But in this case, I think there's definitely some dirt going on with the police. They did mention the fact that sometimes these girls, because we know that they sometimes, you know, went and made some money, and the cops will definitely take advantage of that, and that supposedly the cops, um, especially two of them, were dealing with um, Tasia. Right. And so, like, you never know what they don't want uncovered. You know, they're not going to work but so hard. It's never going to get any farther than what it is with this poor baby. <laughs> well, no, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, with Blue coming online saying that she had... Communication. First, she haven't talked to them since January, and then she talked to Sanaya the morning of, and 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 when did this call happen, and all of this stuff. Like, if Mahogany was down hanging out with those girls in early February, a week before that happened, what happened between the, what made her trust them to go to the Juice Lady and have fun, and open and divulge her family secrets and issues with her family to them. To the point to where they felt like substantially violating her. Blue felt just so jealous and insecure that don't nobody want your people like ass around. Don't nobody want you around, bitch. That's it. And she got she jealous. Likes to open her mouth and insert her foot. That that's just what she does. Because she got her little 15 minutes of fame or whatever it is. But I do believe that she has some kind of in she she definitely knew everything was going on. Just because you weren't there. The problem is all these people, I just can't imagine so many people seeing this and nobody, I would have thrown up. I, I could have never sat there and, and watched what went on, whether it be FaceTime, whether it be on anything. It's the fact that there were eight people in the room that could watch that. I, I it just, it's, it's incredible to me. I, I don't get that kind of, it's, it's, something's wrong. And did you hear about how she was handcuffed? They met yes. Taja. Tasia yes. and Sanaya made her eat her eat they clean. Yes. And what, how can you get off with something like that going on? What, the what? She even defecated on herself. She knew. She yeah, was she defecated. The white man. Oh my God! Even the white man in court was breaking out. I know somebody who yes. was in court and who goes to the court hearings, and I'm probably going to interview them on this platform. Just FYI, but they the way they said that, that man broke down talking about. Oh my goodness. They said that man cried like a baby when he was described. That detective, the white man. And, and, and then the mother. I'm going to just say this. That was her Crazy. Apartment. Nobody was supposed to be living in it. 
She put that girl out because there was that fight and the police were going to... I don't know what kind of real estate agent has Section 8, but whatever. It can oh, and that's there. another thing. That's another thing. I was like... Well, we got the text messages, and I've shown them Mahogany Jackson. Matter of fact, I made them public so anybody can see them. If you go go to the Mahogany Jackson Facebook discussion group, you can see them. And Mahogany told Jessica that her mother wanted to get her evicted, and there was reasonable doubt in my mind saying, no, she did it. There can't be, and just giving her the benefit of the doubt. But her mother's a real estate agent. She know the rules and the regulations with housing and how to get house. She know, she knew that her daughter was going to get evicted. Her profession told her. The circumstances she did it. told her. She did it because she was going to get in trouble. And then my other thing, has anyone seen the father of Mahogany's baby physically? Well, I seen him at the funeral hugging her, and I and I try to make contact with him. Hopefully, whatever he, but he seemed like the type that'll probably go to somebody else. I I don't know, but I'm the one who's gonna ask him the questions. I wonder about the boyfriend and 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 that baby, and why is the mother so? T I don't know. You know, I I seen things, and I'm telling you, in these families that you'd be surprised on. And I sometimes wondered, is, is, is he the father? You know, the, maybe more went on than just trying to do it. I don't know. That's just, you know, I, it's gone through my head. You know what I'm saying? Because if that was my baby and, 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 and any father would go snatch that baby and, and all this stuff is going on, no, sir, you couldn't have, listen, you know, most men would not allow, they would, they would their parents, anybody, the great, somebody would come and get that baby from that sick family. So if you ask me, just something, something seems to be funny to me about that. Right. Very funny. Very funny. Mm -hmm. fun. I'm like, hey, why you would you... stepdaddy? I don't know. Right. And then this alleged father of Mahogany's daughter is blacker than the ace of spades now. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, it's like, why would you consent to your... If you love your daughter and care about her so much, why would you let Gail take, send your daughter to another place like... Why does he have no rights? He has no rights. At no all. rights. He, Mahogany he had no rights either. Look at Mahogany's obituary. It says her daughter's last name is Maddox, and that's not a literal accident. When her mama co conspired with that fucking cricket ass pastor to create that obituary, I know she was smirking and smearing and said she got the last laugh when she had to type that Mahogany's daughter's last name was Maddox. Her last name. Like, that's her fucking child. Nigga, exactly. that's that much. That's, she she think that that's her child because the nigga that she wanted to bust up in her busted up in her daughter. That's what I'm thinking. So the father isn't on the birth certificate. He can't be. Why is the child's last name Maddox and Mahogany's last name is Jackson? Why does the yeah. child have your mother name? Mm -hmm. And is that even your mother maiden name at this point? That baby might, I don't know. That's just, I can't, you know, I can't say it. I'm just saying, uh, you know, because I've seen so much stuff. You'd be surprised. Brothers essaying sisters and all and of that. have babies and, and all this stuff. And I just, hey, get the likes up, please. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to them. Uh, I'm talking to the chat. Oh. But no, you're absolutely you know, right. Yes, you know, that mother, don't be surprised. You'd be surprised how much a mother can resent a child, especially when she was young or she was young. You know, people say, oh, a mother could never just do that to a child. Yes, I've seen it. I've seen it. And when I said that about crack did its job, what I'm saying is that when they dropped that in all the neighborhoods and, and Generation X, which is my generation, um, I, a lot of people had grandmothers and people raising children that just, they couldn't really handle it. And what happened was, you know, you only know what you're taught. And, and, you know, even the mothers now, my daughter is 42 and she has five kids and my son, you know, they're two separate people. They're, they're different, but, you know, there was a lot of problems as far as, um, you know, with me when I was younger, because I had an alcoholic mother, you know, I came from one of those pretty houses. Okay, just because the house is pretty, baby, does not mean there's not a pile of you-know-what inside. A, a package can be very pretty, um, but inside, you never know. So, um, and I came from one of those pretty houses, because sometimes there's a whole lot more love in them little shacks, but that, I digress. What I'm saying is that there's a, some kind of, if you go back to back to back, I, I would love to know where Mahogany's grandmother is. Is she around? The mother's mother? No, 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 the mother's mother is deceased. Okay. okay. Oh, yeah. The mother's mother looked like a typical, you know, Alabama woman. You know, mm -hmm. look all nice and sweet, you know, but <laughs> sabu. You know, so the and mother. Then that Jessica 
girl. She makes me ashamed to be my color. I swear. I can't stand. Mm. You know, I you know, I, you know, you just sound like an idiot. You know, sitting there. Oh, she's a very professional. How could she be professional? Look how she. Come on, girl. What have you ever seen in your life that that's professional to you? Like, I, I, I don't understand that. You know, she said, oh, her mother's a professional woman. And, you know, she, uh, apparently she tried No, to no, 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 no. Her, let me tell you something. When that lady, because, see, I'm not a fool. You understand what I'm saying? Sometimes I just shut up and let people speak, you know? Um, but, you know, you know, when she was saying certain things, I knew was giving me certain information. She, Jessica, did not realize that she was talking to the smartest person that she was gonna that she talked to on YouTube and how I was gonna process it. So she tried to gaslight me to make it seem like I'm in the wrong or I'm saying something wrong when you told me all the tea that you needed. Jessica told me that the mother is the reason she got evicted and was about food stamps and all of this stuff, and that the mother's a good person, right? And then I was like giving her the reasonable doubt. And then when I reached out to the mother and interact with the mother, I, I was just like, the mother didn't notice. And, you know, I'm, I'm cold. I'm smooth with it. I asked the mother about the food stamps. She said, Mahogany never received food stamps. What are you talking about? And she never went to jail. And then when you search the Alabama criminal record, it's not there. And for the mother to know that, she knows that it wasn't really fouled, but it actually got her evicted. And her mother's a real estate agent, so she knew that. Right? So she... First of all, okay, that's number one. That that was the mother's spy. She lived right next door. Exactly. Okay, you know, what do you do befriending a 20-year-old? That's number one. You know, because I don't want to hear about giving her rides and all this other here business. The mother, that was the mother's house. The mother, that that house is in the mother's name on Section 8. And when Mahogany and her got in that fight and the police were there, she knew, you know, that she had to get her out of there. But at the end of the day, mothers do put children out, but cause she wants that baby that bad. I'm telling you, Mahogany was about to try to get her stuff together maybe, you know, at some point. I think that there's a lot of moving parts. There's no one reason this happened if nothing else maybe to bring people's attention to this to the to the sadness and the, and the sickness that's going on you know because unfortunately this is not something that doesn't happen a lot it's like gail I'm treated her daughter like the like the scorn baby daddy and it can be projection because, see, Mahogany's father wasn't at the funeral. Gail has six kids by, I, I think, six different men. Where are all these men that once loved her and busted up inside of her? So Mahogany's mother could be having a curse or a situation where she's been so scorned by men treating her a certain way to where she's become the man. And she projected that onto her daughter and fought with that girl about custody of her own child. That lady, that child come out your puss. She is money hungry. She does taxes. Anyone that does taxes, I'm sorry, I do people's taxes. I don't charge them nothing. She does taxes. She does real estate. She, I'm telling you, I can see it now that she's, she's, she's money hungry. It's, you know, she's, I, I'm telling you that, that that's a big part of the whole thing with Mahogany. First of all, how are you a real estate agent? You're on Section 8. And you, you're going to sit there and help other people rent houses with that kind of commission. I don't know what kind of scams and schemes are going on. I'm telling you, man, how many new things that a lot of people didn't want out? And, and, and those kids, if they were still out here, they'd probably be offing each other. And Blue, Blue is just somebody who's just never had no attention, you know, and... and, and, and but I'll be black ass. You know, I ha oh, I can't stand a hippopotamus. And Vito, and Vito, let me tell you about that sick man. This is somebody who's like, you think that he didn't get his kicks watching that shit? Go I mean, watching that stuff go on? You know good and well he was watching it. Right. He he watched all the videos. Just like just like people be like, where's the video? Where's the video? Bitch, the best video you gonna see is on my page. We might get it after the trial is over in two Send years. Me $20. Send me cash up. Send me the I was I watched it that night. Crazy. I was watching him. Mm. <laughs> Anyways, Carla, I appreciate you. You got any final okay, words? Because yeah. I gotta make some other calls. Okay. I love your show. I'm a Thank you. Also. I greatly appreciate you. Okay, have a great night. You too, sweetheart. Bye. Bye. Yes, yes. Okay, hey man, shout out to you, Carla. I appreciate you for calling in. Absolutely, for that was Jacksonville, Florida, and how signing off. Um, girl, I I was with you. You kind of lost me, but then you picked me back up. You lost me when you said you were black, girl. You're not black, girl. Let me be clear about that. But I appreciate you. More power to you. I'm telling y'all, just because you got black in you, don't mean you're black. I love you. But you ain't black.
You got black in you. Fuck around and find out you be like that lady that hit the man on the side of the road. If it's your black baby daddy, you gonna cry the white tear. Girl, please, child, boo. We ain't got no white privilege. Um, who else? I'm just joining with you, by the way. <laughs> who else should I call? Okay, cool. Let me call this person back. Hello. Hey, welcome to the Do Not Show. Can you mute me in the background? Sure, hold on. Thank you. How you doing today? And what's your name, Call, if you don't mind me asking? I can mute you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. We can hear you. What's up, Caller? Yes, I have. Um, I was watching the show as well with you all, and I just wanted to, to inform you guys, if we all just call the Justice Department, and put a little more pressure on this case. Maybe we can um, get some more results. Because I do believe that this is an insane case. This is unbelievable. I mean, the, the shit, this is, I just can put this into words. Yeah, me either. Pressure. We, okay, we have to call the White House, D.C. We have to put pressure on this case. Period. Well, the so thing is, the thing it has to be done in in a tangible way. I can't, right. and this is why there was no justice for Shane Quilla Robinson. I can't be sitting here knocking on doors without a legitimate excuse or a legitimate reason for me being there. If the government says you need, in order for me to knock on Congress door and get a response for them, you must have this many signatures. That's what I must do. I can't cut corner without any signatures. Or with just the back, one second, or with just the backing of my voice to go to a government agency because white people don't care about black people killing each other. That's number one. Number two, they're going to look at you like you don't know what you're doing. You might got all your facts right. You might have a valid point, but you didn't get a thousand signatures or you didn't file the right motion with the court or something like that. So when you're playing that game, you got to know what you're doing. I don't advocate for anybody contacting uh, Danny Carr, even though his affidavits and stuff is pretty broad and vague. I don't advocate for that. Don't in it, let them do their job. And let's not interview people like Blue to give them an alibi and to coach them on what to say to the police to, to, to get out of their crime for whatever they did in the part that they transpired in. What you just said, sweetheart, I understand. It's very emotional, but it's not logical. So I don't advocate for nobody saying to do anything unless, of course, it's in a tangible fashion. You got a petition, you got something that they must pay attention to, and you doing it the appropriate way, then that's when you can do it. Just don't be here for YouTube. And let, I'm calling the Department of Justice because I'm bored and I need to click in the view from Mahogany no, Jackson. I would never do that. Never. But content creators did that to Shanquilla Robinson, so you, I, I cannot let you say that on my platform as a content creator. But I, I appreciate you. Well, I'm, I'm trying to figure out the best possible way to get some information out there besides just the platform, because us just talking about it's not going to get anything done. Girl, listen to me. The best, yeah. the best evidence we got is what we got. The best evidence we got is what we got. That's number one. Number two, I'm going to show people how to execute a change.org petition. Number three, people are looking at the situation with Mahogany Jackson as their own anecdotal situation of what could have, what should have uh, happened, and also how they too have been in situations with no good friends. It goes deep. It's about the friend dynamic, the, the mother-daughter dynamic. The community dynamic, the no snitching code. So it's 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 much much deeper than. Okay, Dante, I was just giving my input on how I felt because I just this is unbelievable, and I just wanted to figure out some kind of way that we can put pressure on it. We, we can put pressure on it. And as somebody said in the chat, the paperwork needs to be lined up. I know what I got to do to get in front of the mayor of Birmingham where he can't tell me no. Well, he can't no. say he, he cannot address me or he's not concerned. I know what to do in order to do that. And then on top of that, 
Unlike with what happened with Shane Quilla Robinson, guess what? We're in an election year. I got a platform on YouTube. You're not going to listen to me, bitch. I can move the needle with, with, with how you're perceived with my people. That's how I can leverage my platform and signatures and everything. It's a fight. That's what I'm going to be with you. I just didn't know. I didn't understand it. So I just wanted to call in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, blue is yes, yes. Go click. Uh, I greatly appreciate you. Is there anything else you want to say, Carl? I appreciate you. And p c please keep I in mind, I'm not. Let you know that I adore you, and I'm so grateful that you have this platform. Okay, you ain't mad at me, is you for real? You. No. Okay. I'm not. You can go off on me because I didn't know, but I'm just trying to figure it out too. I think some of y'all call in knowing I'm gonna go off on you. That's why y'all be calling in sometimes. No. <laughs> We're gonna get it done right. Absolutely. I appreciate that. Thank you so much for calling in. Call you can call and text this phone and it well. Uh, Thank I'm, you. You can, but I'm gonna have to be piled off. Cause y'all be calling me five, six o'clock in the morning. Somebody called me saying they 60 years old listening to my replay, saying that they calling in. Ma'am, you listening to a replay. I'm not live at 6 30 in the morning. I know they something Thank you. All right, much love. Bye. Nice talking to you. Mine. I like talking to y'all when I talk to y'all, but then when some idiot called in, child, my blood go to boiling. Um, who else should I call? Boom, boom. Okay, let's let's call this one. Damn, it's about twenty, y'all. I'm only called this one and then one more, and then we go. Hello. Hey, welcome, Carla. This is the not. Who am I speaking with? You talking to Red? What's up, Red? How you doing? Hey, Boo. What's up, Boo? You had a great day today. Yes. How about you? It was okay. Got some errands done. Had to spend a lot of money and try to, you know, just grind on my hustle and all. But you know how that go. Okay. Let's see where we gonna start. People would not know who Blue is or Jessica if they have not inserted themselves. And so I have been watching your profile and your channel. And so you was absolutely correct. And again, who have threatened, allegedly, who have threatened Jessica for her to change her verbiage? Because at first she was um, all mahogany this, mahogany that. And then she want to say, oh, Miss Gill, this is Miss Gill. So she started praising Miss Gill. So but mahogany is the one that is deceased. So where are we going to do the disconnect in of trying to get justice for Mahogany and we want to praise Gail because she sold her daughter food stamp. This is what I think. She sold her daughter food stamp. They had a little uh, thing in together. Okay, mom, you sell a food stamp, uh, not all of them, but just a little bit of them, and then you give me the money. That's what I was thinking. And so she sold the food stamps because that girl wasn't even like, she was like 100 some pounds. She didn't eat that much groceries for $400, first of all. And so, just go say. Well, how do you know it was four hundred dollars? See, I like I want to believe it was that or even more because I God knows I despise this, this wicked Negro of a mother she got. But how do you know it was four hundred dollars? There's no facts confirming or denying it. Exactly. Well, there's no so allegedly. I'm from Louisiana. I'm from the South. So the cost of living is not high. So for me and my daughter, we was eating at EBT and swiping that card, eating them groceries. So for me and my daughter, we got the total of maybe like three hundred some dollars for um me and her together. So I don't know about um Alabama, but in Louisiana, the cost of living is not high. So the total food stamps that we got together was maybe three some hundred odd dollars. So um again. They try to make it seem like, oh, she's so young. She know how to manage money. You know how to make growth through your manage the food stamps. You don't need um a fucking education to know how to do all that. I'm sorry about cussing. You don't need an education to know how to do all that. It's just that for the fact that the food stamps came into play, why do your daughter feel comfortable putting her hands on you as her mother over some food stamps or over whatever y'all was fighting for? Why did she feel comfortable enough to do that? And don't get me wrong. Gail probably was hitting her daughter back. She wasn't just standing there letting her daughter whoop her tail. So they was fighting each other like they were strangers on the street. Mm -mm. 
because ain't no way that I'm finna sit here and uh, put hands on my mama because we had an agreement over some stamps allegedly, and she didn't give me all the money that we agreed on. Listen, I ain't no listen, 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 listen. This is what I'm gonna say, and, and you know I don't like the mom because I know what kind of weaker nigga. Ain't no fucking way in hell something that I then had sex to have. It's gonna put their hands on me. You're gonna die putting your hands on me if you my child. That's just principle. So oh, that's right. you know, I'm, I'm just I'm just yeah. being real. You you gonna die or the Department of Juvenile Justice System, whatever's gonna take you. But I'm gonna beat you to I'm gonna beat the skin off of you for playing with me like that. You're gonna have to call the police on me. So the fact that Gail called on Mahogany shows you how weak and scary Gail is. Well, then, yes, yeah, it's, it's that point, too, but then that's her daughter, and you know what you said yesterday on your show, that um when you was growing up, your mama had put you in juvenile hall because, you know, you was um being a little hothead, so she could have had that option, too, if that's the option they had, that um Alabama had acquired for her mom to do with their children, and also, um, <clears throat> where is... Uh, okay, I think they said she has six siblings. I don't know how old they are, but the ones that do have their own place, I don't know if they all are in Alabama. Where are all of her other siblings or her family members? She had no other choice but to go back to um, Birmingham from Jasper. Right. Uh, Girl, listen, and when we seen the sister at the funeral, her sister was dressed like she was going to Magic City or oh, Magic City Reject. Okay, they all I mean... At, even at the press conference when they was talking to the news people, I would not, my eyes could not be that dry. I would be having an ugly cry. They act like they was going to go to a fashion show. The hair, the, the lace front was done. The makeup was on fleek. I was like, where, where are y'all going? Your decision just passed away. And then the way that she passed away. But y'all sitting there like, y'all camera sharp ready. What's going on? Yeah, and you know, Gail done moved on. She, her brother-in-law done died. So she done moved on, posting about that. Now she want to grip off of him, girl. Talk, child. This case is just like, it, it's, it got a lot of twists and turns. Like the higher ups, they have a little bit to do in it. I'm starting to think, so. I'm starting to think that Gail um, is, is an Eastern star. And this one cook dude is a Freemason, this crooked ass pastor that wrote that fake ass message from Mahogany. And you knew it's fake because... Her mama posted on her Facebook, and you can see where it says seen, and the message is missing, and it's, it's edited. And Mahogany don't type it for a grandma. I'm starting to believe that Gail is an Easter star, and that this pastor over at CBS Ministries is literally um, like, like a, a, a Freemason. And she's an Eastern star. That's what I'm starting to believe. I don't care what nobody's saying. I have speculation to believe that. And I feel like it was a sacrifice. And then on top of that, what do you think about what I just broke here in this conversation? When I just read these warrant affidavits, they said this happened on the 24th, not the 25th, like everybody think. So Mahogany was dead and gone two days before her mama even posted it on Facebook. So, so, so again, and I'm going to go, I'm going to go back to it. When we're looking at Gail and I was wondering in one live stream, I pulled up. Mahogany was calling Gail nonstop on Friday, and then it says 7.46 a.m., right? So yeah. seven, sa if, if this happened on 2.24, that means it happened on Saturday morning or Saturday night or it's early Sunday. You understand what I'm saying? Like she, yeah. seven, her, Mahogany sent her message at 7.46 a.m., right? It yeah. couldn't have been on Sunday because Sunday is the 25th. It had to be that Saturday morning. I'm so confused, but watch, it's, it's some weird stuff going on. It is, because when you also, when you showed the messages, when you um, showed that um, her um, Mahogany's mom had called Jessica at 8 o'clock that morning. 8 o'clock that morning. I'm going to bring that up right now. Let me show y'all. Yeah, so you said oh. only a one minute. She was on the phone for one minute and some uh, uh, some seconds with someone, but that call with, um, with Jessica, that was at 8 o'clock. The proof is in the receipt. And it's in the receipts. receipts. It's in the receipts. So if this happened on the 24th, Friday, the 24th is Saturday. Friday is the 23rd. Blue mm -hmm. already said, Blue already said she knew Mahogany or had somebody to call and say Mahogany was kidnapped before it happened. It happened on Saturday. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm a, and how could if the police index it happened on 724? How could we uh, indicate 
that this right here, this message right here wasn't sent on Saturday morning because Sunday morning would be the 25th and the police the indictment say it happened on the 24th. So when she was calling her Friday at 2.57 p.m., 2.21, 6.40, send the police department, three hill houses don't count, 7.46 a.m., well, it couldn't have been Sunday morning because the indictment says 720, excuse me, 224. So again, Friday, when she was calling her nonstop, and then Saturday, screenshot at 754, she's on the phone when this is being sent. On Saturday, who are you talking to? And then you post, and then check this out. Check this out. So Friday is the 23rd. Saturday, Saturday is the 24th when this happened. It happened at night. So this message had to be sent at 7.46 a.m. Gail posted this on February the 28th, which is Wednesday, days after this happened. Talking about, Lord, she hurt. Let me figure out when she actually posted that she was missing. The first time she posted that she was missing. Let me see the date. Because this is, this is completely, completely ridiculous okay she said that and her daughter also, was missing why is the um the police officers or the department whoever's involved why can't we get access to all the reports that we want the access to and then also for the autopsy report to know exactly what time did she pass away but then again they can also um, false document that too so we ain't gonna know exactly what time did she pass away well only the family can get the autopsy that's not public record uh, even though like it's usually made public and the cause of death and all of this stuff is made public. Uh -huh. The cause of death is the bullet behind the head. As far as seeing the cuts, the abuses, the grape kit, all uh -huh. of this forensic, that's all directly involved in the criminal proceedings. We're not going to get that and we shouldn't expect to get that. We might, you know, that's a criminal case. Look at a uh, clear example. We all know what happened with FPTD Buck. We've seen snippets of the video. We've seen the actual video when it happened. But uh -huh. then once the investigation and the case was over and they were sentenced, that's when they, uh, when they were, when, once it was over and they was found guilty, they released it. So this is the same case. The best video you guys are going to find is on my social media platforms. And I'm not going to tell you the other one because a lot of y'all know me from a whole nother platform and just follow it over here on YouTube. That's what these YouTubers don't understand. But, um, yeah, the best video we have is on this page, on my YouTube page. So. This is um just uh crazy and they just making a sh uh, shit show out of that girl's name and um her legacy is her daughter so her daughter gonna have to grow up and you know see this. Well, the, right, her daughter is, and they, they didn't ship her daughter off while Gail's still collecting money of the daughter. And I'm like, well, maybe she collected money for the daughter and gonna give it to the son. But then Gail's still posting stories and pictures of the daughter like she's still there. Uh, you posting pictures of your daughter, daughter, as if you now, this is what the focal point is. You know, she posted more pictures of her daughter, daughter than her daughter because she's making money off of her daughter and grifting. But people don't know. Go to her page. She's already posted that she was on the plane and leaving, going with the son. She ain't, Gail ain't giving that son none of that money. Just like Gail ain't giving that son none of that disability check that she get for the child or whatever benefits food stamps, anything. Well, as far as the record is concerned, that child probably, you know. And then here's another thing about her being evicted. Even though that apartment was in her mom's name, I've been evicted um, also in the past. So this is how I handle it. And this is how um, Mahogany should have handled it if she wanted to, even though it was in her mom's name. But if you stay in a resident for, um, and get mail at the address for 30 days, they have to kick you out legally, even if it is in someone else's name. So, she had 30 days to get evicted. She didn't have to leave right then. Maybe she was scared of her mama a little bit. I don't but know. But listen, that was if she had 30 days to get evicted, that happened in December, mid-December, mid-January. They are, uh, Blue already came out when she was cool with all of them in January. Mahogany was hanging out with her and Tasia and all of them. Mahogany was just in survivor mode. Mahogany was hanging around them girls, getting acclimated, because she knew that her big ask was, uh, to, uh, can I stay with y'all? I'm homeless, you know. And at the time when she was hanging, they, she was still upholding his reputation, like she got her shit together, she's still good, and not letting her know she's homeless or about to become homeless. Because if I'm hanging out with somebody and people have this 
perception about me and I'm the pretty fun girl and I just suddenly say, hey, I'm about to become homeless, their perception of me is going to change. And so, you know, and then from January, we're hanging out with them, jumping a girl. They say Mahogany was with Tasia and them and jumped a girl at a store in early February. And I feel like Mahogany did that just to be like, okay, if I do this, it shows loyalty and it shows that I'm down so that I can have a place to stay. But, yeah. And they put too much on Tasia. They like Tasia is the best thing since sliced bread. But I don't know her outside of we watching her. And after the third day of eviction notice, you had to take it to the courthouse. They had to leave up. And then file the eviction. That's why I say if it happened, if it and, and then check this out, follow the timeline. So okay. the pol the police was called. December the 4th, she went to jail, a 30-day notice, mid-December, uh, expires in January, they go to court, file it, um, so it happens and three weeks, 30 days, and then mid-February, early February, the, the three-day, uh, the, the Marshall levies on the property. Well, the Marshall levied on the property on that Friday, the 23rd, because Jessica said, Mahogany was in Birmingham three days before that happened to her. And even right now, Jessica's now learning that it happened on Saturday and not Sunday. So technically, she was only down there for two days before it happened. And instead of her going down there, being with Tasia and hanging out, upholding his reputation, what it is is now she's, she, she's now having to come clean that she's homeless and have to acclimate herself and, and that she don't have a place to go. Now they can perceive her like, okay, you really need us. And now I'm going to do treat you however I want to treat you because you're in a situation where you need me. But see, she um, went to Brandon's house, not Tasia's. So she went to a male, not a female house, Brandon. She went to go stay with him. I don't know if she stayed with anyone else. I'm not listen, sure. If she, listen, 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 listen. If she went to stay with Brandon, she knows she was in danger. I see. I didn't put up Brandon's house. The whole complex, all the buildings smell like Dukas, Caldwell, Spiderwebs. She went over there. She was really down there and desperate. Even Jessica came on the platform and said her personality typically said she was desperate for a friend. She wanted to be validated. So... I doubt she had like that girl just was so clingy like okay she even followed me to the bathroom no girl she followed you to the bathroom because maybe allegedly she was on some 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 narcotics and she was paranoid maybe that's why she followed you to the bathroom but her being clingy and needy I don't get that or uh, maybe because uh, see Jessica looked like she on some too maybe Jessica go to the bathroom hit that goddamn pot of cocaine and just uh -huh. like blue beat me like ass was putting them goddamn drug and mahogany sister maybe Jessica was too that's what she's not saying maybe maybe not that's just an allegation or speculation as to why she would be following her to the bathroom. Okay, and then she um, gave that girl alcohol um, as a minor. Mm, as a minor, getting her alcohol, getting her rellos. You said me. You said you went really all of that stuff. Come on, you know. Yeah, enabler. Well, I appreciate you for taking my phone call and listening to me, and we have a little chit chat. And I love you, baby. I'm, I appreciate you greatly. Appreciate you for calling in. Love you. Appreciate you guys. Is everything okay on the end? Put a, put some stars in the chat if everything is okay. Put a, a, a two in the chat if there is uh, discrepancies with this live stream because I just seen some in the chat. I don't know how true it is. But yeah, thank you so much for calling in. I'm going to call somebody else. You can call me. Call me anytime if it goes straight to voicemail. I'm asleep. It, you don't need to blow me up. Just send me a text back. I'll get back to you. Thank you. Right. Um, all right. Ooh, this is fun. I like talking to y'all. Y'all are very informative. I see why they got the the hotline over there. Um, all right. Let me call this one. And then, oh, there was an. Let me call this one. This one person is from Alabama. So, Hey, welcome to the Denot Show. Thank you for calling. What's up with you? Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, hey. All right, turn me down in the background. I hear an echo of me playing on the TV or something. Oh, yeah, I can turn it down. Yeah, yeah, uh, turn it down. How are you doing and what's your name, if you don't mind me asking? Um, I'm not give my name. Okay, that's fine. And you, I see you calling from an Alabama number. Are you in Birmingham? Yes, I am. Okay, that's what's up. So, um, you have any uh anything to say or what's going on? Any updates or anything? Uh, 
I can tell you um, this about Brandon Pope. You can tell me about Brandon Pope? Yes, he always um, has been a child predator. So, tell me more. I'm sorry. Who are these people on my voice? Um, matter of fact, no, they won't. I can. What I can do is I can disguise your voice right now. Um. So, uh, tell me, I'm I'm gonna disguise your voice, and I want you to tell me everything about Brandon Pope, and then tell me when you're done. On the count of three, one, two, three. Go ahead. I want you to tell me everything that you know about Brandon Pope. Your voice is disguised. He's a child predator. So how do you know that? That's an egregious allegation. I mean, do you have any proof to substantiate that as in doc? Uh, yes, this has been in um, Department of Human Resources where he dated to one of his nieces. He dated who niece? No, he dated to one of his nieces. Oh, so he has he he had a case where he dated to one of his nieces? How old was his niece? Um, I'm not sure, but I know she's, I think she's like, Maybe between eight to ten, somewhere around through there. You say twenty uh, between the ages of eight to ten. Wow, that is that is crazy. So, uh, what? And, then, it, and, uh, and um, you know, I don't know what was, what was going on through that part. You know, because you know, I mean, you know, I know his mom was lying and say he wasn't still living in the house and all that stuff. So, you know, but he was. So he he graped um he graped his eight to ten year old niece and still was living in the house with her is what you're saying. Yes. Wow, that's a tr that's that's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. So yeah, oh my goodness. Um where else to go? So before he was still living in the house, you know that. No, 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 no. I, I put it on everything I love. Your voice is completely dis disguised. So you can say whatever you want to say. I'm going to disguise your voice in three, two, one, go. Like I said, I, I know what he did. And, you know, he was sleeping with his sister and stuff like that. You know, even as a child. Like I said, I So you saw him messing with his own sister? Uh -huh. So did he ever get held accountable for that? I told his mom, and you know, uh, like I said, my voice better be disguised, man. I put it on everything I love. Your voice is completely disguised. And if I say this part, they don't know. They won't know you by voice, I promise you that. They gonna know by what I'm saying. So is you gonna say it or what? So wait, Brandon went to job court too? When did he go to job court? I can't tell you that because I, I can't 
say, but you know, um, but I know he went to job court and it was someone who said that he molested them there. He, you know, he raped them or he molested them, he tried to or something like that. So this is not the first time this has come up. So, did, do you think he met Mahogany during job court back in, uh, I want to say, um, th- I cannot say that. I think he met her here in Birmingham. Okay, makes sense. Wow. Do you know any of the other defendants? And no, I don't know any of the other ones, but I, I know who Brandon is. And you know, Brandon said that uh, the girl then um, told him the script, and that's why he retaliated. Do you believe that somebody told Brandon the script? Uh, yes, because he he's 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 um, he's the one who told Brandon the Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I unmuted. You say he's not a bad person as far as you didn't know him, but you just also said that he played with his sister, his niece. What you mean he's not? But wait, do you think that Mahogany told him the script? Do you really believe that? Uh, if she had a gun on him, that's why I was told that she had a gun on him. Yeah. But wait, you're, 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 you're felt the facts that they want to portray is that she came and seen that a pow pow was missing from her purse and money, then told him the to strip to see if he had the pow pow. Now, if she don't, one, one second, one second, because. One, one, one second, one, one second, one second. I can't hear you, and I, and when you speak, I want to disguise your voice. So wait, wait till I'm done, okay? Because I don't, I don't want your voice to be revealed. If, if, if there's not one in her purse, where does she get it to tell him the script? From the guy she went over to his house with. So what guy did she go over to his house with? So wait, you mean to tell me Mahogany was hanging out with Ace Harris, the same dude that pulled the trigger on her? Yes, because, you know, she called herself being mad because everything didn't happen in her mom's house. I mean, at her house. And then she came back to Birmingham and she had an end with else to go. And she was mad because 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 she was and she thought that her money got stolen. You know, everybody was telling that Brandy had did. All of them was using drugs. All of them. They using cocaine. They using poo-poo. They using meth. They using everything. So, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Let me back up. So, you're now confirming that she had no place to go when she came back to Birmingham and she decided to go back around her friends. So, how long did she know Ace? Ace is the guy last name Harris. I, I, I don't know who that is, but I know that's who she was with. So somebody released text messages um, saying that she was with somebody that had her in the hood. So she was hanging with Ace this entire time from, from, from the weekend. So Ace is the reason she was around Tasia. Is that what you're saying? believe that I, I really don't i'm sorry um i don't i think that that whole narrative is cap no it's not no it's not no it's not no it's not um yeah um mahogany he you know she was telling me that she was telling me that um she was telling me that um she was telling 
If you look at back at some of those videos where they said that girl was jumping people in the store with other people too, that girl was not a saint. I'm not saying that, you know, she deserved what happened to her. Lord knows nobody deserved that, what they did to her. Nobody deserved that, because what they did to her was wrong. Yeah, but hold on. Let me let me pause you. What I'm saying is, mahogany jumped these jump other girls with taging them. I think in December or January, and I'm telling you that she did that to fit in because she knew she was going to become homeless, and that's not really her character or or the characteristics that she had. It, she got away from it, and now she had to go back to it. She had to go back to. She was trying. She was trying to get away from this while the girl went back home when her mom was selling her food stamps and stuff. Her mama brought this, her daughter, her other daughters, and their children there too. And that's why they was getting into it because of the food stamps. So let me ask you a question. So how do you know for a fact that they was getting into it because of the food stamps? And um, what do you say about, do you know much about her relationship with her mother? No, but I know about Brenda Pope. Okay, so how can you speak about the food stamps? You, you're, you're saying that based on the facts that I put out there, or are you saying that based on your anecdotal experience or any, or any common knowledge around Birmingham? Some other things that I know, and I just cannot just put that out there because I, I, just, I just can't. And when you say you can't put it out there, who would that would be about beyond the scope of Brandon Pope? Into it, you know, I'm just, you know, just trying to put the, you know, just, you know, just trying to tell you what happened for real. And like I said, Brandon Pope told that boy to do something to her, cause she, you know, like that bitch made me strip. We gonna do something to her. And he's the one that was driving the car. Brandon was driving the car, right? Mm-hmm. But why would she do? Like I don't see this little twenty year old five one little girl. With no protection. Oh, okay. hey, listen. So let me ask you a question. When one of them said that they they had they had consensual XEX with mahogany, was that Ace Harris who said that, or was it another person? I don't know that. I, I don't know that. And what would go from her using his pow pow to point to her to? The person he he sh Brandon Pope he should have held him accountable for allowing her to take his pow pow to point at him, and now they want to take it out on the women. So I don't understand how that is true. It can go from them all of us two men opping up to take her out. Like I don't understand that. Well, my, uh, my thing is that maybe they had something against the girl. Maybe Yeah, so, um, wow. Thank you so much for uh, the information. Um, you know, I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, and, and the most crucial evidence that I have here, in it, it's cross-reference to text message that I've seen previous, that Mahogany allegedly sent to someone that said, he got me in the hood. That could have been Ace, but there's a disconnect as far as why would Ace be with her? What'd you say? Uh, the hood was in Brandon's backyard. The hood was in Brandon's backyard? Yes, it was, a, that was in the hood. That was in that backyard. In, 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 in the backyard, where the house where he lived, that was in the backyard. That was in the hood. That's where they were beating her up and stuff like that right there. In her, in, but so how far away is Brandon's location from uh, Tage's apartment? Backyard. 
So ain't nobody else see like why did nobody else come forward if they sitting there beating her in Brandon's backyard? Mm. It's crazy now. Um, I I don't believe. I think it was a collective decision. Do you know anything about uh, Tage's baby father being sprayed down after coming from a convenience store? I think back in 2019, and Blue being named in it in mahogany. All eight of the suspects, including Brandon Pope, um, Blue, uh, which is Quinetta, Clayton, or Carton. And um, Lil D, whoever that is, do you know anything about the them having a connection to that particular uh, open case? I know nothing about those people. Don't think I can tell you something, but I know about Brandon Pope, and I'm gonna tell you something else. Also, Brandon Pope been on drugs. He got a uh, older sister that's on drugs. Got another sister that died, um, but she be dead uh, for a year. Uh, and uh, except uh, in August of this year and like I said they been on drugs that's the only thing I can tell you that I know for real that man that man been on drugs he been smoking poo poo uh mm -mm. Um, yeah oh fun so mm -hmm. they ain't gonna get high for anything these days cocaine okay, milk everything anything they get their hands on damn anything they get PCP now, Blue said they bathe with Ajax. Do they smoke that shit too? I don't know nothing about that, but I know that these people been on drugs, okay? Mm, well, I do appreciate you calling for calling in. Anything else you want to leave with uh, leave us with? Well, I'm, I'm sorry they happened to her, and you know, I apologize. You know, uh, if I said anything wrong or harm anybody, hurt their feelings, anything for mom here. I'm sorry to happen. I'm sorry to happen to your child. I'm sorry to the child, not you. I'm sorry to happen to your mom, baby, and I hope you grow up to be a great woman. Well, you know, Gail gave the child away. Yeah, Gail got a whole campaign saying, Cindy, she going to take care of the child. The child got on the plane and went with Mahogany's brother, Joshua, the military dude. Gail still collecting money on behalf of that child, whether it's government benefits or the people that, that are emotional about this sending money to a designated account. And she's advertising and saying it's for the child without telling the people that the child ain't even with her no more. And she's collecting shit. He's sent to the child, and the brother, because it's supposed to help raise the child, and she is wrong for that. I think she has something to do with it, too, because she's not dealing with what she did. That child was not being Birmingham. She was still being at home. Say it again. She would have still been at home. Thank you, Carla. I greatly appreciate you. You can call me anytime. You, I know you got the tea. And you, when you listen back, you're going to realize that your voice um, was on... Um, and and I want some more tea from you, okay, sweetheart? All right, thank you, bye. Oh, y'all can call in disguised, and we'll put them off over you. Um, so as long as we answer like this, so I gotta call this one back, and then somebody else from Louisiana. Oh Lord, that lady called back. <laughs> Uh, Welcome to the Denai Show. How you doing? How may I, I take your I order? Talk to you, boo -boo. Uh huh. I talked to you already. Talking radio. I talked to you already. Okay. Yeah. yeah my bad. Bye bye. bye. Okay. Bye. Ciao. <laughs> Y'all over there watching one of the uh, suspects. I ain't got time for that. Who is it? Somebody told me. Let me call this person, man. No, too many, too many rings. One more, and then we got to get up out of him. Then we'll go to the gym.
Yeah. What's up, Trisetta? How you doing? You must um to keep calling my phone back. You must keep forgetting. Oh my god, it's so many listen, I'm not I'm not finna call nobody back. I'm not finna do that no more. Uh -uh. Somebody call me back. Hello, welcome to the Deny Show. How you doing? I'm good. What's happening? I'm pretty good. Who am I speaking with? If you don't mind me asking, if you want to be anonymous, let me know. If you want to disguise your voice, let me know. Uh, let me be anonymous. Okay, cool. What's up, brother? What you got for me? So I was saying, how I, I want I want to tell you. So when I watched I watched the I watched I see hello. Yes, I'm here. We hear you. Yeah, I seen, so I seen Blue on the platform. I seen Blue on the platform, the official, the official pain. Yeah, that's a grifter. Uh, can you turn me down in the background and not name any of them losers? Uh, cause, but anyways, what did Blue say when you seen her? Oh, wait, could you disguise my voice too? Okay, yeah. You, you want me to disguise your voice? Yes. Okay, let me see. Um... All right, go ahead. When, when the guy was like reading the article, Blue was just so boo hoo crying, and it felt so real. Like, I almost believe, like, she didn't have nothing to do with it because she was crying so bad when the person was reading the article. It's just, I don't know, it's just hard to believe. I don't know if she really had anything to do with it directly, indirectly. I don't know, but she can show up on the show, so I'm not sure. <laughs> I just thought that to be crazy. I'm laughing because Blue, Blue is a character. Blue need to be in jail. She gonna be in jail or hell. I don't care what Blue do. It could be 20 years from now. We gonna treat her like OJ. The motherfucker gonna get you for everything that you did. Blue is the new OJ to the black community. Right, right, right. With a big black ass. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much, Carla. All right. Make sure you guys hit the like if you've enjoyed this conversation and this content. I greatly appreciate you. Shout out to, oh, my gosh. I have some of the best supporters. Shout out to y'all, man. Y'all keep me in the know. Y'all keep me on my toes. I'm so glad I can bring y'all content. Remember, we're multifaceted. It's just like I'm covering this case and um, got to put it into perspective. Shout out to everybody else for being here. Okay. Uh, I'm definitely going to release those warrant affidavits publicly within the next 48 hours. Okay. That's what I'm going to do um, because I feel like it should be public record. Okay. But you heard it here first and you got the records here. And honestly, I don't care who did it. it. It needs to be out there, which is why I'm just going to release it. So, But shout out to y'all for being. Please make sure you guys hit the like if you've enjoyed this content. Greatly appreciate you guys. And also, thank you so much to the new members. I did see I got some new members. Please go ahead and put some stars in the chat and welcome the new members. I did not see who they were because I was busy with the content. Thank you for the super chat. Y'all making me feel so Show. And shout out to that other super chat I seen for 1999. I greatly appreciate you. I meant to get to it. I was just like occupied. Thank y'all so much for supporting the content. Absolutely appreciate it. Thank you for the Thank you for the super chat. Oh, y'all making me feel so special. And thank you to the people who send me uh, cash apps. That is to replay game that are not here live that decides to send it to me or people that are right here right now. I greatly appreciate y'all. I even spoke to the person who uh, who got the court documents for me and they decided that they didn't want to be named publicly for whatever reason. But you know, I absolutely love and appreciate you all. Each and every one of you, no matter whether you just like the video, which is absolutely free, subscribe to the channel, which is another thing that's free. If you like me, you want to catch me live stream instead of calling me out the, uh, during a replay game, okay? Make sure you set the notification for always so you'll be immediately notified whenever I do go live. You can support me, cash app, dollar sign to not 007, a super chat, super sticker, or a super thank you for replay games. Without further ado, I really appreciate you guys. Much love, much support. 
Greatly appreciate you guys. Uh, we're going to be coming up. You know, some more information is supposed to be released this week. And obviously, perhaps an exclusive interview coming up soon and shortly. Grace, you be, I can't even talk anymore. You know what I mean. Appreciate you. Love you. Come back. Until next time. Bye.